this is my channel Shy's Designs and I'm Cheyenne. I started this business because I wanted to stay home with my babies and make money while doing that. I'm here to breathe life back into furniture and make beautiful pieces affordable again. This next video and a few to follow will be my biggest furniture flip yet and my most expensive. And because of that and all the fixes that I have to do for this piece, I want to break it up in a few videos so that they don't go on too long. And I have to build the suspense a little bit. So let's get started. To open up this video, we have a leather sectional couch with an ottoman here. This is my biggest and most expensive flip so far, and hopefully my biggest payoff in flip furniture. I'm so excited to get started on this one because it really pushes me out of my comfort zone to accomplish a lot of fixes and finishes that I have never tried before in these next few videos to come. Let's see how part one turns out. First, I stripped the leather sealer coat off the ottoman. I used the highest proof rubbing alcohol I could find and acetone to remove the coat. Removing the coat before applying the paint makes for a more even coat of paint and a better texture in your finished product. I removed the coat with a towel and a scrubby sponge for the rougher parts. I started with the base so that after the leather was painted, I wasn't dragging it all up the floor. For the base, I sanded all of the rough spots first and I wiped it back with a towel. Then, I painted each side with an all-in-one black paint called Caviar. This paint is matte and I wanted it to stay that way after I applied my matte wax coat to the base as well to protect the paint while I was doing the leather part of the piece. I wanted the leather to really showcase by itself, so I wanted to make the base matte so that it would blend into the shadows once it's all put together and put in a living room. I moved on to cleaning behind the buttons so that I would get a really clean look in my finished product. I used flossing picks because they are plastic, they have the pointy edge, and they were delicate to the leather. So I knew they wouldn't damage the leather, but they would still get the job done. And it worked really well. This is actually a hack because I had no idea how I was going to get behind these buttons to clean. And I saw these flossers in my bathroom and I thought this would be perfect and I just had to share it with you guys. It worked really well and I used two for all four buttons. It was really satisfying to do as well. One of the button areas had a small tear so I ended up pulling that leather back a little bit where it was torn and then I placed a small amount of leather adhesive. Then I took my finger and wiped it down so that it would lay down like normal and it worked perfectly. It hasn't moved, it hasn't opened back up. This adhesive for the leather specifically works really well and I will link it in my description for you guys. I used my matte wax finish by Magnolia Homes to finish off my base matte look and to protect my paint colored while I work on the leather top. Now onto painting the leather. Instead of chalk paint this time, I decided to use all-in-one paint. Because I don't do couches very often for you guys, I want to switch it up so that if you have any questions about using anything differently, I have tried it for you and I have told you my honest opinions and you can feel more comfortable or less comfortable using a specific product based on what I tell you. I have seen it done with all-in-one paint a few times and I wanted to try it myself to see how well it actually works. All-in-one paint is a primer, paint, and sealer. So you're not supposed to have to do anything beforehand and you're not supposed to have to do anything after you already have it on. And it's supposed to apply really well. I used my own color and I got it matched at Lowe's using Valspar and I will attach my formula in my description and it also is showcased here in my video. It is a very warm brown color and I 
I honestly love this color. I ended up applying the paint with a large chalk paint waxing brush and it really helped with the application. It made it really comfortable for me and it made the application of the paint really, really even and I like that. The only drawback would be that it was a brand new brush and I had hairs falling out so I had to pick those out a couple of times and then I noticed small ones when I went back that I had to touch up later. But other than that, this was great. I started with a light coat of paint to get a nice finished application. I made sure all the nooks and crannies were covered so that when I went back to dab my paint, I didn't have any missed spots and I wouldn't have to cover it more than twice because the more paint you put on the piece, the more chances it has to get stiff and lose the texture that you're looking for. So I made the first one thin but made sure to cover every part of this leather. So I just painted painted it on like normal and then the second coat I dabbed it on quite aggressively. This gave me the opportunity to do only two coats and to do two thin coats and to get full coverage. This paint gave me a great experience and my leather texture was kept. I also didn't want to risk any brush strokes because I really wanted this piece to look super professional and not look painted. I also tested the scratch resistance for this paint because I noticed when I would scratch the last couch that I did with chalk paint, if I scratched hard enough, it would start to come up. But with this paint, phenomenal. And nothing happened. It was amazing and I'm so happy with that. And that's before I sealed the leather with a conditioner and everything. So that is a really great sign. Lying the ottoman on its side, it gave me the opportunity to apply the paint evenly on the inside and keep the top and bottom from touching while it was drying. I used a stiff cardboard piece to really get a crisp edge on the lip of the ottoman because I did not want any missed spots because I don't want this piece to look painted. Next, I used a moisturizer that I really like and it smells like oranges. I wanted to take away any possibility for the buyer to know that it was painted, which also includes the smell. This paint doesn't have VOC, so it doesn't have a big scent, but I just wanted to cover my bases. After applying the moisturizer, it gave me the ability to see any spots that I may have missed. So I did some touch-ups one side at a time so that I didn't miss anything. After touching up each side, I sanded down each side with a fine foam sander. Using this sander gave me the ability to sand without doing any damage to the paint or the leather. After sanding back any rough edges and getting back down to the natural texture of the leather, I added a leather lotion to rehydrate my piece completely and continue to get that silky smooth texture that I'm after, which was accomplished. There were a few hairs and debris in the paint so I scraped and sanded back all that I could find. Wiping back the paint with my hand helped settle the paint into just the tiny imperfections that I wanted to fill. The rings on the ottoman are not as deep as they started out but after three or four heat treatments I couldn't get these guys out. They aren't structurally damaging so I will definitely mention it when I describe it in the description. This was a fantastic transformation. You guys, this ottoman for this sectional couch furniture flip turned out perfect and I'm so excited to see the rest when it is finished. The durability and the texture is there and the finished product that I saw in my head when I purchased this piece in the first place is there and I'm seeing it all come together and I am so excited for you guys to see part two and possibly part three of this video. It just depends, like I said, on the fixes and finishes that I have to do and how long it takes me to do those things. Because I like to make these interesting as well as informational and I want to be able to produce really good videos for you guys. So if they are broken up in a few rounds, just stick by me. Just tune in every Sunday at 8 a.m. and we will get there, I promise. And I'm so excited to see this. And so far, this ottoman is a really good testament for how the rest will turn out. So excited.
And always, thank you so much for spending this time with me and going on yet another adventure. This adventure is going to be so exciting and it already is starting out to be a fun ride. So if you enjoyed this video or happen to learn something, leave a like, subscribe, and please comment, you guys. I love all, reading all of your comments and answering all of them and seeing the genuine and honest and amazing people that follow me. And I am so excited to continue on this journey with you guys. I post every Sunday at 8 a.m. See you then. See you then.